G'day, I'm going to be covering geometry nodes in this one and it's just going to be basically adding a modifier, assigning the right node tree and doing some checks to make sure like that um, if the, the node tree exists that we're not just going to keep appending in the same one but we'll skip the appending if um, you know that property exists and that sort of thing and um, we'll run through some other checks and I'll cover two topics in this one um, first thing that you're going to need is a source file that we can just append from and ideally this just has all your node groups set up um, and for this one it's just on a node graph and everything's exposed on the modifier but I'll also cover how to append a, um, a, node, a, a group node that has all the inputs on the node itself um, and how we can hook this up and join it to the output um, so instead of accessing the, the inputs um, from outside also we might access them from the node direct, directly but um, yeah just uh, make sure that your node trees are uh, named accordingly because um, if you create a new node tree and make a group um, so control G if you name this group node um, whatever that's cool for um, the actual node group itself but the actual node tree inside of it is still called node group so just keep that in mind so that um, so you're gonna name this GN something that'll be the node name but um, you also want to jump into node group which is the actual tree and then call this you know like gn tree something just so that you got like a bit of a naming convention it um it just helps for targeting things um yeah so that was just a quick example but this is the one that i'm going to be appending to start with anyway so um yeah we'll start with a new project um, jump into Serpens, grab a panel, add a button, and create an operator for that button. So in the panel, uh, when we click this button, first thing that we're going to want to do is append um, a node tree so we can assign it to a modifier. And that's where we'll need node tree here. And in Serpens, we're going to need to attach, oops, attach as a file the source um, blend file which will in my case be a Voronoi grid and that'll be the path and then for the name um, obviously this is going to be the name of the tree that I'm going to be appending so um, paste that in there and if we jump over to our blender file and under node groups and we just test this button we can see that that node tree got appended in which is good uh, next thing that we'll need to do is create a modifier for the object so we can just right click anywhere here um, actually instead of using the add modifier operator we're going to do it with a function because we can just set a name straight off the function and all we need to do is copy the context for the view 3d area go to active object modifiers and new modifier and we're going to create a new modifier and give it a very specific name because like you don't want to leave it up to chance that um say like you've got a geometry node modifier but then they've also got you know bevel and whatnot if you just let it default to geometry nodes name you can have multiple when they're going to stack up to zero zero one so how are you going to target which geometry node um and if it isn't active so they've got bevel selected you can't go through active because now you're going to error out because geometry nodes isn't active modifier so I just found with um, with creating mod new modifiers, giving them a very, very specific name. So like um, I'm going to call mine um, CRZ GN Voronoi. So when this gets created, it will have its very specific name and it needs to be geometry nodes. So straight away, we've got the node tree being appended in. We've got a modifier created that we can target. 
And now we just need to set the node group so that it references it. And with this modifier added right now and this in the blend file, um, we can copy the context and we can say active object modifiers. Now we've got this drawing as an entry. If we drop this open, you can see down here there's a pointer that points to the node tree. So we can set that property. And if we grab a set property node, we want to set the node group for this modifier, which will be this modifier that we just created. So we don't have to do it by name here, we can target it through that socket. And we can just change it to reference the node tree that we just appended. So let's get rid of all this. And when we click the button, um, let's zoom in, I might just turn on my wireframe. Cool, none of my default settings are set up for some reason. Um, I probably changed them over here. Yep. Anyway, um, so yeah, we've got the modifier being created. We've given it a, a name and assigned the node tree to it. And if we add another object and we assign um, the Voronoi Gian modifier to that as well, it's going to double up and just keep appending um, the same uh, node tree, but one node tree can be used for multiple objects and have different inputs depending on what the, the object is. So you can see the density is different for each object. So we don't need to keep appending the same one. So what we can do is just check if that property exists or that node tree exists with um, a property exists node. And we know that we just want to check the node groups, this doesn't need context. We just check all node groups to see if Voronoi grid exists. We'll just copy that main um, main node. So now we're checking to see if this exists or not. And if it doesn't exist, then we'll append the node tree in. And if it does exist, then we don't need to append, we can skip that, just create the modifier and set the node group for that modifier to the one that we know exists now. So we'll just get rid of this duplicate. We've got one set up, it's already been appended in and we hit the button. It didn't re-append, there's no duplicates. It's just using um, an instance of the same one now. And this one can have different inputs to um, to this one. So yeah, just a little quick check. Um, I think also um, we could do a check to make sure that um, the names are correct as well. Like if we add, if we do this again to the same object, we're going to end up with two geometry nodes modifiers and one's going to have zero, zero, one. So like um, we could also do another check to say like you wouldn't really need two Voronoi geometry nodes modifiers on one object. So we could also say like um, do an if condition and if the modifier exists already then don't create the modifier. So um, do exactly the same thing with property exists. And Instead of um, using this as um, twice and then having to do it four times for each of these two conditions, we can just chuck this in a function because this will just reduce the amount of nodes um, that we need. And if you don't know what a function is, it's basically just a um, group node, no different to geometry nodes where like th consider this like the group input and this the group output so um we can use this um like a group node sort of thing and this is what you would call the group node you know where you would tab into it but obviously you can't tab into functions in serpents 
But just um, imagine for a second, this is like a group node that we're creating. And um, we know we want to create this one, but we want this to be procedural. So we'll change this to property because down here, we're setting it um, to the appended from file, but then setting it from here. So um, we can do that from outside. Um, so for example, we can put this on the outside of the function and that'll come in and um, go into the set property. So uh, now what we can do is get rid of the set pro property and creating a new model file um, because we've got a function for it now. And we know that we want that top one to be set to this. And we can get rid of that and reuse the same function again, which essentially does the same thing. And we can use the appended from file. And now we can run our check to see if the modifier exists before creating it. So we can chuck this here. And if the modifier, oh, well, we didn't even need to do the function stuff, but anyway, now you know how to use a function. Um, yeah, just realized. But if the modifier does exist, then don't do anything. If it doesn't exist, then create the modifier. So we we'll use those two conditions. And now, if we click the button, nothing happens because we've already got a modifier. If we click the button, nothing happens. Already got a modifier. We'll add another cube and click the button. It created the modifier because it didn't exist. Um, as for displaying the actual values, we're going to run into some problems specifically with this, uh, with this switch, which is a boolean, but it shows in the modifier as a zero and a one integer. And we can fix that. But um, just to give you an idea of how to display properties, um, you can just basically copy it off the modifier. But when you do, it's referencing the object that you just copied it from. So make sure you change this to active object. So now for whatever the active object is, it'll look for this modifier in that input. So if we plug that up there, but now we've got a, a one and it's going to change it just for that one object. If we come over here, change that one and change that one. So you pretty much want to set these up for all of your inputs and just pretend for a second I've done all of them up to extrude which is going to again just display an integer and that's not quite what we want changes to active object so here I'm using an extrude um, to turn on and off but we want this to be a um, boolean so we're going to have to do that through a custom property by displaying an actual boolean and replace that. And then when this boolean updates, that's when we're going to set the property for this one. And the on and off will be, um, yeah, so when the boolean updates, this is going to trigger meaning when they click on the boolean let's go boolean and now we should see oh also you're gonna going to need an update tag for some things so like if you just go to active object and search for update grab an update tag just chuck this on the end and update the data so when you turn off and on your boolean it's updating the the object data so let's say we can fix booleans from not uh, not showing as a as an integer and from here it's um yeah just keep adding in um display properties and display all your properties um
Um, what else we might cover is appending in a node and adding in a node to the graph. But I might just split this up into a separate video and I'll make that a part two. So um, I'll be back in a minute.